Nowadays, see you venture in careers in the music industry with a lot of ease. Some see you even transition most of their activities to music and put voice acting in the back seat. Others join the music industry in a rather quiet way and then impress everyone with their singer-songwriting skills or deliver performances that we'll never forget. Say you are this awesome. Let's kick off this episode of Say You Lounge. <laughs> Welcome to Seu Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is 5 feats that completely changed Seiyu's stance in the music industry. Yeah, in this episode we'll go over some of the most memorable and industry-defining moments for male Seiyu as artists. Note that in this episode I won't be covering feats by 2D idol groups or projects. This is going to be all about Seiyuu artists. I've mentioned before, but up until the tens, there was a small portion of people that were actually excited about what was starting to happen. After all, Seiyuu were trying their luck at being singers, and some were genuinely good singers to boot. Of course, I've mentioned on episodes 4 and 5 the roots of this trend of Seiyuu making solo debuts or having their own groups and bands. It dates back to the 90s and two important groups, EMU and Weisskreuz. If you want to know more about them, please do check those episodes, links are in the description. Much has changed throughout the years and now in 2021, we can safely say that, thank God, or similar, that some male CU made their solo debuts or created their own bands and unit projects. Really, thank God they did. But of course, the route wasn't always easy and there were many talented CU that saw their efforts go down the drain and, eventually, decided to leave the music industry. Then there were a few selected CU and bands that forced their way into the spotlight and broke or set records that pulled off unique things and that turned into superstars. Thanks to this CU and their impressive feats, the way people look and interact with music by CU in general has never been the same. It has shifted from Seiyu that apparently sings and it must be any song, to singer-songwriters that produce their music and are serious about it, so we must check it out. Let's check who are the owners of the five feats by Seiyu and bands that forever changed the way people look at Seiyu artists. Mamoru Miyano the first male Seiyuu to solo headline a live show at Nippon Budokan. Mamoru Miyano is a superstar by now, there's no doubt about it. Almost everyone in Japan that enjoys listening to pop music likes him. Even people that don't like music and come across Miyano like him. Is that likable and charismatic and it plays a big role in the way his popularity continues to rise even after 14 years since his solo debut. He's genuinely nice and he radiates happiness. Now, if we look closely at how the music industry has changed for Seiyuu wanting to be solo artists, we have to look at him as much more than a likable pop artist. A superstar. Mamoru Mianu is a pioneer as a Seiyuu artist. He is the most successful Seiyuu artist to date, but that didn't happen in the blink of an eye. Before the masses noticed him, Mianu was already releasing music since 2007 2008. His first big hit was Orfeos in 2011, with that single paving the way for him to have his long and successful career. Adding to that were a series of perfectly timed single releases to be featured in anime series, something that helped boosting his visibility. 
Then, in 2018, Mamoru Mienu set a CD sales record for male seiyuu with Eminem the best, going for 22,468 copies sold. That record was later beaten by Soma Saito, yet, up until then, it was the most CD copies a male seiyuu had managed to sell with an album to their name. Among these and many more impressive feats of Mianos that helped shape the music industry for Seiyu and at the same time completely changed the way people looked at Seiyu artists is his headlining show at Nippon Budokan in 2013. Believe it or not, in 2013, male Seiyu weren't that popular and not counting Gran Rodeo, because they are a band, not a solo artist with a band backing them, no male CU artist had ever set foot on stage at the iconic Nippon Budokan to headline their own live show. I am talking about a venue that all artists in Japan dream about headlining. For many, it is the sign that they've finally made it big. For Mamoru Mieno, it was exactly that. He made it. Mieno performing at Nippon Budokan was the start of what has been years and years of seiyuu artists headlining shows at it, as well as going for larger venues. What seemed like a small step back then ended up further contributing to opening the doors for male CU artists to fill that venue and even larger ones. Toshiki Toyonaga, singer-songwriter and creator? I've mentioned a couple of times on CU Lounge and even on articles and list features at the hand that feeds HQ. Toshiki Toyonaga is the best singer among male CU. Even fellow seiyuu say it. By now, it is common knowledge for fans of male seiyuu. But there's more to him than this claim. He is a respected singer-songwriter and creator. Yes, you heard it well, Toyonaga made waves in 2014 with his first full-length album, Music of the Entertainment. He composed all songs, wrote lyrics to all songs, played guitar for all songs and helped in the production of the album. He also created the concept and worked on the art for it. Toyonaga, back then signed to a small music label named Art Sonic, was showing everyone that he's genuinely talented in all fronts related to music. He made sure that everything about it was perfect, that had his touch and that was genuine. When you listen to that album, you get a wonderful display of his singer, songwriting and production skills. It's almost like a portfolio album for him. In 2014, there were barely any male CU with solo careers in the music industry. There were even fewer performing good music and even fewer that genuinely had good singing skills. And then there was Toyonaga, the complete artist that had his hands all over his music, was part of the entire creative process, was thriving as an indie artist, respected by fellow seiyuu and admired by fans. That talented man would end up founding his own music label in 2017, his music and is still as respected and successful as ever. He's a one in a million talent and music virtuoso, the artist to beat among male seiyuu artists. He showed that male seiyuu venturing to the music industry most of the times may be incredibly serious about it, almost like a second career to them. He showed that Seiyu could be respected and release good music regardless of the size of the music label backing them. He showed that Seiyu artists can be versatile, performing a wide variety of music genres and play around with completely different singing styles. And all that was impressive in itself. 
Toyonaga opened the doors for singer-songwriters like Soma Saito and Shugo Nakamura to take the stage and showcase their passion and talents without being bound to what music labels were making seiyu artists do until 2014. Gran Rodeo from a known band to Anisong Kings. Since 2005, Gran Rodeo have been a band known for their versatility as well as for their insane talents. Fronted by vocal chameleon and rock star Kisho and counting with the talented Izuka on guitar, the band has risen from a rock band that few knew about to a staple in the music industry in Japan and for those internationally, a band that will end up on your radar soon enough. The Kisho Izuka connection works like a charm, as both are insanely versatile. Kisho with massive control and a wide vocal range, and Izuka with a vast array of techniques and different playing styles he can shift or go through with absolute comfort. However, as much as I'd love to say that Gran Rodeo were massively popular right from the start, truth is, barely anyone knew about them. People were aware this band was a side project for Kisho, best known as Kisho Tanyama, the Seiyu, but few took it seriously. Once again, back in 2005, the general feeling about Seiyu venturing in the music industry was not that good. Given a couple of unsuccessful or just downright lazy solo debuts, people were aware that Seiyu were trying to use music just as a way to make extra money, not because they were genuinely interested in being solo artists or musicians. And once again, you can tell by the sheer amount of lazy solo debuts between 2000 and 2009 that went under the radar soon after. Kisho had in Gran Rodeo a way to showcase his talents as a singer and lyricist, but he faced a really tough crowd right from the start. Thankfully, the band focused on doing their thing, creating a unique sound that leverages the talents of both core members of the band, thus being able to tackle any music genre with any vibe and requiring the most exquisite of vocal performances. Over the years, the band has performed songs for anime series. Bless Writer, Codebreaker, Kuroko no Basket, Bungo Stray Dogs, Carnival, Nanats no Taizai and Togai no no Chi are among the various anime series they have lent their talents to. Their talent to create catchy, high throttle and exciting rock songs has made them a reference in the music industry in Japan with them being a sought-after act to perform music for anime series. Gran Rodeo is the first band with a male seiyu as its frontman to be massively successful. They opened the doors for other male seiyu fronted bands to rise and find their place in the music industry. Among those are Old Codex and most recently Servanity. They turned into any song royalty. The rock band everyone loves, the rock band that everyone wants singing music for their favorite anime series. Gran Rodeo are a rock band that delivers electrifying live shows, reinvents itself year after year and has always had the same high level of quality while having quite the eclectic repertoire. They are indeed royalty. Shotaoi – Breaking Gender Barriers More than a quantifiable feat, this is one that comes as a welcome change, giving a completely different look at the possibilities that solo artists can explore in terms of image and identity. Shotaoi has been a singer for most of his life, but only when he made a major debut under Broccoli, a King Records sub-label, in 2013 with Blue Bird, would we see his true potential and, at that time, something that we'd never had seen before. Aoi is not afraid of playing around with his image. As a matter of fact, he embraces it in ways that, before 2013, we'd never imagined Seiyu embracing. 
There's still a real stiff idea about the image of male CEO when they venture to singing as solo artists. If you want to sing rock, you have to look edgy or tough. If you want to be a rapper, you have to learn their gestures and swagger. If you want to be a bubbly pop artist, then your image has to lean a lot towards the cute vibe, softening the expressions to look almost like a teenager. There's a couple of variations to those, but by the end of the day, those three are the basic looks for every male CU making a solo debut. They'll fall into any of those three categories. It seems like there's nothing more beyond that. Well, there's Shotaoi. A true pioneer among male seiyuu, Shotaoi embraces an androgynous image for his solo career. But you'll say, I've seen Aoi wearing dresses. And others will say, but what about that rocker phase in Eclipse? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Shotaoi embraces the concept of pop artists creating a fantasy for their fans. Their artist self is a persona, changing looks to create fantasies or contributing to creating fantasies is part of the philosophy. Thus, for each CD Aoi releases, he creates a fantasy, a look if you will, to flesh out the concepts and at the same time, have fun while being himself. Why is this a fit? Because Shotaoi has opened the doors for Seiyu that want to have an androgynous image to not be afraid of it. Music speaks for itself. The image only complements the soundscapes people experience. Since 2013, no other Seiyu has dared to explore the limits or the possibilities of their image in the way Aoi has. You see that in the visual case scene, but it has yet to translate in full to the CU industry. Soma Saito First full-length album sets sales record, plus second full-length album opens the door for new possibilities. If you've been listening to Seiyu Lounge's episodes, you've noticed that Soma Saito is a name that can't help but to be mentioned for various reasons. One of those is that he's the one responsible for breaking Mamoru Miyano's album sales record. He did that with Quantum Stranger, album released in 2018, and up until the moment this episode was released, that record is yet to be beaten. Saito beating that record was a clear indication that a new generation of seiyuu artists was ready to take the baton from Mamoru Miyano and Toshiki Toenaga and run as fast and as successfully as both have done so far. It was an exciting thing to experience. Miyano opened the doors to the music industry for male seiyuu solo artists. And then, a decade after his debut, that baton was passed to others that carry over that underlying objective of Seiyuu artists' music to be taken seriously, for Seiyuu artists to be recognized as artists, to be on equal footing with acclaimed artists in Japan, and even go head-to-head -head with international artists. Soma Saito arrived as a promising talent and since then has grown to be an artist akin to Toshiki Toyanaga for his generation of seiyuu artists, however with the popularity akin to Mamoru Miyano's. I've mentioned it before, but he's almost like a hybrid artist of both. And that takes us to the second part of this feat. His second full-length album, In Bloom, is just like Toshiki Toyanaga's Music of the Entertainment, a groundbreaking CD by Male Seiyuu. Saito composed all his songs, wrote lyrics to all songs. He got his first production credits by arranging one of his songs as well. He's in charge of his concepts and is shown a vast music knowledge that has translated into music that no other male CU is doing at the moment. In Bloom sits alongside music of the entertainment as the most iconic and groundbreaking album by a male CU. 
although now it's still not noticeable, in a couple of years it will be only natural that we'll all be experiencing a new generation of solo artists that is inspired by his bold and dark approach to songwriting, as well as trying to emulate his singing technique and tone. After all, if you notice all the feats I mentioned in this episode, it all comes full circle. A decade between those and the cycle is already repeating itself, and more CU artists are carrying the torch, trailing new territory for the new generations. As you could tell by this episode, there are a couple of industry-defining moments that everyone should know about. These are moments that have shaped the way people see and interact with CU artists' music, as well as moments that have opened or are opening the doors or new doors for the new generations of CU artists to explore at will. Mamoru Miyano, Gran Rodeo and Toshiki Toyonaga are royalty in the music industry when it comes to male seiyuu. Shotawoi is pushing the boundaries of what is acceptable or normal for male seiyuu to do. Soma Saito is carrying over Miyano and Toyonaga's torch, showing that singer-songwriters can be insanely popular and highly regarded plus respected by specialists, media and fans alike. Now tell me. What do you believe it's a hurdle that CU artists have yet to overcome to be further respected by those that are not fans of CU or anime? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be, and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of CU Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly mail CU and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of Seiyuu Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around. <laughs>